Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Anna here and as you know I am on the Cambridge Weight Plan. I started it back on the 1st of June 2019 and um, I have lost a fair amount of weight so I'm doing these videos to give you a weekly update of how I have got on and to share with you my reflections on the diet process, my weight loss so far um, and anything else that I think that is relevant to me and, and hopefully useful to you. So let's get started. This week, I um, when I got weight, I had lost uh, an amazing two kilos, uh, which is 4.46 pounds, and uh, that means that I have lost a total now of 30 kilos, which is amazing. And for those of you who work in pounds and stones, that is 66.9 pounds, so really 67, um, and that makes a total of 6.78 uh, stones. So that's, um, I'm basically three pounds away from achieving a five stone weight loss, which is amazing. Um, to be fair, at this stage, I have been losing over the last few weeks, I've been losing 1.2 kilos on the second round of um, 1.2 kilos a week on the second round of um, of soul sauce or step one of the Cambridge diet. Um, just in case you don't know about it, you do, uh, there are different stages, there are six different steps. Uh, the first one um, typically involves replacing your meals with uh, products which are uh, have all of the nutritional needs that you have, but you just replace all meals with uh, either three or four products a day, and then you increase uh, food gradually. So I have been, uh, I have done one round of 12 uh, weeks on four products, and I had one week on um, three products on step up meals, and then now I am on, I think it's week five of the second round. Um, so to lose two kilos, that much weight at this stage was such a nice surprise because I'm more than happy with my 1.2. I was trundling along with that. Um, two kilos has been amazing. So already at 30 kilos, which is a fantastic achievement. I couldn't be happier. Um, and if you've seen my videos and, um, you know, go back and look at the playlist that I have from my very first week, um, you can see even just looking at the thumbnails, you can see the difference in my face. My body has changed as well. I have gone down four sizes um, and it's really starting to make a difference in everything I do. So um, I always share how I'm feeling um, and it has been very positive for me. This has been a super positive experience and I have fully embraced it and I'm feeling the benefits of it. But I know that some people uh, always um, want to know about potential side effects or you may be worried about how it might impact you or not. Uh, and I haven't I haven't spoken too much about this because I haven't felt a huge amount of side effects or at least I didn't think like I that I had and um, I I took some time to just kind of go through how I've been feeling normally I, I take everything on my stride and I carry on regardless anyway uh, so I wanted to uh, give you a fair account of uh, of any potential side effects that I've been feeling or not now um, there's a few different things I'm going to go through, so I do have some notes to make sure I don't lose uh, my train of thought. Uh, so let me get started. Um, I'll go through uh, side effects that are more Cambridge specific. There are others that are more, I think, weight loss specific, and I'll try to do a combination of the two. Um, but at least this is my, my thoughts on side effects, or potential ones, or at least the ones that I know about, and, that, uh, and I'll share whether I have felt them or not and other type of side effects that, um, you know, that nobody tells you about or some people talk about, but it just, it, it affects different people differently. Um, so uh, let me go into, into that. Um, so side effects. The first ones that I want to cover is the, I guess, um, if you know that about the Cambridge diet, you go down to 800 calories a day and the aim is that on the first two, three days of uh, being on step one, on soul source, you will uh, you will go into a state of ketosis, which basically means that your body changes how uh, it fuels itself. Typically, it's fueled by carbohydrates, which turn into sugar, and then that sugar and that glucose is what your body uses for energy. When you go into a state of ketosis, you take away the carbs and those sugars that you're absorbing through nutrition, 
and you put yourself in a state where your body starts to use its own fat reserves as a source of energy. So that's what ketosis basically means and um, uh, and it does require a bit of a transition of how your body operates. So you may feel some, um, call it detox symptoms, call it keto transition symptoms, whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you're if you're going through that, typically people call it the keto flu, um, because it's flu-like symptoms that you feel when you first do that transition. So things like headaches, things like um, body aches, uh, almost like a feeling of feverishness. Um, you may have headaches, uh, migraines. It it depends. Um, uh, so I actually didn't feel a huge amount of keto flu symptoms. So I had a little bit of a headache, um, just a mild, like a really mild ache on day one. That went away at 10 o'clock at night on day one. Um, for me, it felt as if that's when keto kicked in because I felt a huge rush of energy, which I was surprised about, uh, especially since it was 10 o'clock at night and I was actually thinking, I need to get ready to go to bed. What am I doing feeling like I'm bouncing and I'm ready to go for a run or take the dog for a massive walk or whatever it might be? So that, that was interesting. Day two, I felt, um, again, a tiny bit of a headache, but what I realized is that I hadn't been drinking enough water, so I started drinking lots of water and that went away. And I did not feel a keto flu symptom after that whatsoever. So for me, it was just those first two days. Um, my husband has been doing it with me. He did not feel anything. Um, but we have done, um, in the past, we have done a juice cleanse. Uh, not not directly straight before, the, um, before we started on Cambridge. Because... Yeah, we we had not done any form of diet uh, when we started. We started in June and I hadn't recovered from Christmas. So that's how long I, I was overdue starting something. Um, but the previous year we've done uh, an, you know, a, a juice cleanse for more than, um, more than seven days, which means that your body does quite a lot of a cleanse. It was intensive and if you do those, the green juice is just something to behold. It does the world for you, you can really feel the benefits of it, but that was um, that was something else. That's for another day, if you want to know about that, let me know, but uh, otherwise I'll stop right there. Um, so uh, the point of talking about that is that when we did that juice detox, it really felt like it cleansed our stomach, uh, our system and we felt a lot of benefits. So I think maybe because we had done that type of cleanse in the past we're in a better space even though we have been eating not the best food in the world um but maybe if you haven't done something like that that helps you to clear toxins off your body etc then you might feel more you might feel more um more symptoms in fact uh, that's just reminded me of another one um maybe i'll talk about that actually because Whilst I haven't felt, let me talk about that and then I'll go through the rest of my list. Whilst I haven't talked about, uh, whilst I didn't feel a huge amount of symptoms, um, the detox point is interesting because you, um, don't know if you know that you store toxins in your body through your fat cells, uh, whatever you're feeling, whether it's stress, whether it's uh, toxins that you're consuming, being through food, alcohol, smoking, whatever, your body and your liver are processing those toxins, but they are flowing through your body, through your bloodstream, etc. So as, as whatever you eat goes into your system through your digestive system and your digestive tract, your body will be taking nutrients, but it will be absorbing things. And if there's toxins in there, there's only so much the liver can handle. So there will be things that you will be absorbing. And then those get stored together with the fat cells it just everything gets clumped together and then your cells might just say yeah there you go going to storage like we all have that cupboard that we don't want to go into that that's what your body does um with your fat cells and and in goes a whole lot of things um so as you start to lose the weight your body releases that those toxins as it uses the fat cells the the toxins that are stored are released and you may have um random simple symptoms that that go along with that for me the one thing that i have occasionally is 
what I call a detox spot, which is not a full on spot, you know, like a pimple on your face. It's almost like a blind spot, like a or like a bit of a heat lump type of thing. And I'll get them in random places, like maybe I'll get one on my chin and my forehead. Those are usual places that you know, if if as a teenager that's where you got spots, then that's where the the detox spots will initially go to. But I will get them in random places as well, like in the middle of my back or maybe like in the middle of my thigh every now and then or on the back of my neck. Um, and some people have said that those can be associated with either food toxins or mild food allergies or something like that. I'm not sure it's because I have an allergy to Cambridge uh, products because I don't feel um, any allergy type of symptoms at all. I don't have allergies to anything, so I don't think it's that. But it's almost the reaction of your body to, if it had an allergy to a food, that could be the sort of things that, that you get. Because people with um, with some uh, um, food intolerances, like people that may have some lactose intolerance, if they have something with milk or butter in a cake or something, um, they get lumps in their cheeks or maybe on the back of the neck. So there may be just things that are releasing and that's where your body's... Um, a lymphatic system goes through to clear all of the toxins that are in your body. So there may be random spots that they are not painful, at least they're not, they're, they've not been for me. Um, there's nothing that, don't try to pick them or anything. They come and they go. They may take two, three days. They may take a week, but they come and go and they disappear. And I actually think of them as a good thing because it means that your body's clearing things out. And if you had something that you were stored, it's better to get rid of that toxin out of your body than to have it in there. And you're just given the space for your body to be able to cope with it and to deal with it. Um, and that was space that it didn't have before. So it's actually nothing but a good thing for you. So those are um, the detox spots, or at least that's how I call it. There are other, um, which are not necessarily keto <laughs> related, and then the, these are general if you were doing any form of fat loss that might happen. Uh, and uh, they're also um, not Cambridge specific, those are more generic. Um, but in terms of other keto symptoms that are typical and, and that you may have read about or heard about, um, one of the big ones that people talk about is bad breath. Um, let me think. I don't think I've had bad breath, or at least I haven't been able to tell in myself or I haven't been told, which doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't happen because sometimes you can't tell for yourself and other people might not tell you. Um, I haven't smelt it in my husband. In fact, it's very much the opposite. And he's not told me anything and I'm pretty sure he would have told me loving way, okay? He wouldn't be nasty. Um, he would have told me if, if I had had it. And I think the reason for it is because we drink a huge amount of water. And even if we drink coffee, we still drink a huge amount of water. So I think that makes a big difference. But if you don't, I or if you uh, don't drink a lot of water, you drink a lot of coffee and you smoke, then I can see how that might happen. Um, and maybe not, you know, I may be just generalizing. But I think that might be the case. Or it may be that it affects different people differently. I definitely haven't... Um, haven't had it, or hopefully I haven't had it. So, uh, so that, that's been so far so good for me. Um, the other symptom uh, that people talk about is either uh, constipation or diarrhea. The opposite. I think constipation is more like uh, more frequent than diarrhea. If you have diarrhea, then it's probably because you're clearing something. Um, but when you go down to eight hundred calories a day for products, I let me tell you, your body is going to try to absorb absolutely every single ounce and gram and milligram and micro micronutrient that you give it um so he's going to absorb everything he's got and that doesn't leave a lot of room for um movement and therefore a little bit of help will go a long way so this is where the fiber is good and if that doesn't work do something like seneca or some other natural remedy to help you make sure that you're clearing things out because things are supposed to go through. Um, I won't say too much more, but just make sure that that is happening as it should do. Um, but it's something you can do, uh, you can do something about. So as far as a symptom I wouldn't worry about, I would just deal with it. 
The uh, next one, and this is more for women, so men, if you don't like this kind of talk, apologies, but uh, it, it is a fact. So period changes. You may have period irregularities, you may have periods, um, the periods might stop, or if you've been overweight for a while, it may be that you haven't had a period for a while, or if you've had problems with them, they might come back, and if they do, they might come back with a vengeance. So make sure that if you have anything that is period related, you go and you see your doctor and you get yourself checked, because likely is that it's just a temporary thing with the diet, but it's better to be safe than to be sorry, so just get that checked, um, if it does happen. Then the other thing is hair loss. Um, a lot of people complain whether you're going to be having hair loss, uh, whether uh, you have more hair coming out when you brush. I will say that um, I have been feeling a little bit of this. Now, I do have a lot of hair and it's quite thick, uh, but I have been, as I've been brushing, I have been noticing that the brush has more hair than it used to have. Am I worried about it? No, because I actually still have a huge amount of hair. But at the same time, I don't want it to become so thin that it's, you know, that it's not something I enjoy having. So um, the thing here is to try to complement it. I actually checked with my Cambridge consultant around this. And she mentioned that biotin as a hair vitamin and phenyls. Uh, will be very helpful. Uh, it's, it's widely used by many of the Cambridge consultants sales, themselves and people that have been on the Cambridge diet and they say that it has worked very well for them. So with that in mind then you know I'm on biotin. I started taking it this week. I'll let you know how you get, um, how you get on. Um, you know I, I've also done other things to, uh, to help uh, my hair so I had it cut um, not the biggest amount that I actually wanted a bit shorter, but anyway, it's where we are. Um, it's a uh, a cut to keep it healthy and to make sure you know when you have longer hair or even shorter hair when you cut it, it gives it a little bit more energy, less things to work on, etc. So uh, I thought it can do any harm, so just shorten that a little bit. Um, you know, I do a hair mask every now and then or a protein mask for it and I take care of it. Um, in the summer I um, I try to keep it wavy and I let it dry itself in the winter because it's freezing as you can tell because I'm wearing this woolly jumper um, and we're not even in winter yet, it's autumn. Uh, in, uh, but when it cools down I'll dry it and I'll dry with the hair straight, uh, the hair dryer and blast it straight because um, I can't be bothered to wait for it to dry by itself because it would never do and I would have a cold. But the main thing is that um, I try to use as little heat on my hair as possible. I try to take care of it. So whatever it is that you need to do to your hair to make sure that it, you keep it in as good health state as you can, then do so. And the vitamins are meant to help. So I'm not going to say as started taking them this week I haven't got a clue I'll need if with that sort of thing you really need about a whole month um before you see any benefits so I'll let you know if that's the case but um but if it got really bad that I was really worried then you know I would go and see uh the doctor to see if there's anything else I can do about it but for now I'm not I'm not overly worried I just know that when I brush it there's just a little bit more than usual it's also entirely possible that it's because it's autumn, because normally in autumn and um, spring your body naturally sheds hair as a way of kind of cleansing and recycling and just getting ready for the next season. So it's very possible that it's just a seasonal thing. It feels like a little bit more than other seasons, I have to say, so hence why I'm taking the vitamins. Um, but I'll let you know. I'm not really overly worried about it, but that's something that, that can happen and I have experienced. Now, um... Then there is um, body-wise, again, dry skin. You may feel that your skin gets a little bit drier quicker and that will be uh, water-related. So if you don't have a water glass near you at all times and you're in Cambridge, then think about how you can incorporate more water into your day um, because it's essential for your skin, for your hair, for your energy, because that leads me to my next point, which is sometimes you might feel a little bit weaker. You're only operating on 800 calories a day if you're on soul source. And therefore, um, you know, step one is, is intense for your body. Uh, the weight loss is amazing, it's fantastic, but you're still 
operating on at the very least or kind of half of the calories that you should have in a day. So it is going to be a little bit of strain on the body and you need to keep it fuel. And if it's not with food and calories, the one thing your body does need is water. So make sure that you keep yourself um, watered at all times because the water that, uh, the more water that you drink, the better that you feel, the better you'll be able to keep going. I know that if I have been drinking, um, if I have a coffee and I have nothing but coffee with no water in the morning, I will feel lightheaded. So I'll get, you know that feeling when you go to stand up too quickly and you get a bit of a rush to the head? I will get that. I will get that if I'm just walking and I turn around in a different direction, if I haven't been drinking water. Um, so I, I know that I need to keep uh, myself quite hydrated. But if I have coffee, I mentioned this before, but I do want to make a point of this. Um, if I have coffee, coffee is naturally dehydrating because of the caffeine. So do not think of coffee as a replacement for water. You need to have your water. And if you have a coffee, you need to top up on your water to compensate for the dehydrating effect of the coffee. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I have my little schedule of how I go through my water. I have a big shaker that I keep at home. As you see, I have a big glass of water and I kind of have a target I'll drink so many of these throughout the morning so as long as I can keep up with those then I'm okay with my water intake but particularly first thing in the morning um, uh, I have a long commute to work so when I go into the office it's about an hour drive and if I just drink a glass of water on an empty stomach I um, believe me I won't be able to make and I have to do too many pit stops at the service stations along the way so that doesn't happen so I get up and this is not good I get changed well shower changed everything go to work and until I get to work I don't have any water but the first thing I do is when I get into work I have a big glass of water if I'm working from home like today the first thing I do is have a big glass of water first thing in the morning and then I can get on with the rest of my day so at least find a way of topping yourself up and then that will keep you going and keeping your water regular throughout the day. Um, the other thing is if you're exercising and you're on step one, is madness. You're not going to have the body energy. And if you can do it good on you, I just think if you do loads of exercise, it's crazy. But if you do some walking, that is okay because you can drink your water, you can have your meals, you can have them regular, you can go on your walks. Um, you know, you can take a bath with you just in case you get hungry or you get weak along the way. So that's something that you can do. But what I find is that you need to keep to your products within every four to five hours and keep hydrated. And if you do those two things, you'll be sorted and you'll have no problem with lightheadedness. Um, then the other thing that this is more generic is loose skin. People are scared and worried about loose skin. I haven't lost enough yet to get to that point. I am pretty sure that I will get there. Um, listen to me being all smug about the fact that I will get there because that assumes that I will have lost all of the weight that I want to. But that is my goal. I am focused on doing it, so I'm going to continue to work through it. And I have braced myself for the fact that that will happen. However, that doesn't mean that I'm just willing to accept it and not do something about it because body creams are my best friend. So I am making sure that I apply sufficient cream on my body to help the skin retain its elasticity. Um, and I'm considering whether to take some collagen, uh, collagen supplements. Um, I'm going to discuss that with my consultant next week and I'll see how that goes. Um, but, but at the very least, just the creams. And um, whilst many people may not want to know about this, if you get a cream that is particularly good for stretch marks um, because that's something that will goes hand in hand with the with the loose skin the stretch the stretch marks will happen if you're losing weight and um, then make sure that you get one and you know it doesn't have to be anything expensive um, you can get the um, palmers do a really good cream which is for um, I mean it's recommended for pregnant women because of course pregnant women go up in the space of nine months uh, a whole baby weight and then they go back down again so um so any form of stretch mark cream is great palmas is relative is fairly affordable and you can find it in super drugs and boots and quite a few places in the uk and um and it is very good so make sure that you find a cream that works for you and you apply it and you just are super generous with yourself with that cream 
because you need to go to town with it to make sure that you're in the right place. That sorts out any potential dry skin that you might have as well, but it, it makes sure that you keep your skin toned so that as, you, as you're losing weight, is not fully sagging. Um, and of course, by the time you finish and you go up your steps and you go past step three, you will start exercising. And when you start exercising, using your muscles again, your body will react differently to it and it will uh, it will tone in a different way. So, or at least so I've been told and I'm looking forward to that stage. Uh, but, you know, I'll let you know how I get on with that. But for now, I'm just making sure that I'm doing everything within my power to try to minimize the damage. Um... Uh, the final thing on that is that you have to accept that if you've got a lot of weight to lose, your body will not look like an ideal body of somebody that you may see a model in a magazine or something like that. Your body is going to be your own, is a reflection of your life, your experiences and everything you've gone through. And you will have some battle scars in them in the form of stretch marks, in the form of skin, in the form of a million other things, just like you have scars on your knees from when you fell when you were four years old and you scratched them, or any other things that you know what you have, you know your body, you know what you've been through. The weight loss is the same, so why would you expect your body to go through a battle like that and not have some battle scars? It's just evidence that you've survived it, that you've gone through everything you've gone through. And the reason why I talk about it like that is because I... um. I do find weight loss as a battle, or at least I have found weight loss as a battle for most of my life. I've been overweight for as long as I can remember. Uh, even as a child, I was overweight. So it's, it's always been there. It's been my my constant battleground. Um, and I am I am determined to beat it. And for me, this is, this is why I'm doing it. And this is why I'm sharing my story with you. Um, but it, it is something that you go through and whether people accept it or not, it is a highly, highly emotional process. Uh, it, it is an internal battle. It's a battle with yourself for choices, for decisions, for self-care, for self-control, for self-love. Um, uh, there's a lot of what you, you know, you will have heard the things of what you eat in private, you wear in public, because that's kind of, if you're overweight, you're showing to everybody in the world to one extent or another that you've had your own bat fight with choosing what is the right food for you. Um, and that is that is a fact of life. So don't expect that you've gone through all of that and all of that emotional turmoil and all of those life experiences and stuff and that you're not going to have some form of evidence that you've gone through that just like when you've had an operation you've got evidence that you've had an operation so expect that you're going to go through that and it's just a fact of life and instead of um you know hating yourself for it or fixating on that part of your body actually just thank your body for having coped with it because it's a huge amount of strain and stress and our bodies are amazing things that just react in in ways that we can't even predict ourselves so Bit of self love, bit of self love, a little bit of self care. Um, uh, on to other uh, side effects. Um, people's reactions, I spoke about that in another video, but you won't be able to control how people react to you and you won't be able to control how you react to people. So, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it makes you feel defensive, whether it makes you feel outraged, whether it makes you feel proud. Uh, happy, sad, whatever it might be, um, but you won't be able to control how the people react and you will go through your own emotional reactions to that and to your weight loss because you will have a whole range of emotions that you have to go through, um, starting with getting yourself in the right headspace. Um, you know, starting with how to think about your plans, changing your routines, how to do the things differently, how to adjust to your day-to-day, etc, etc. You will have the frustrations of being able to fit into, uh, not being able to fit into the clothes you want to. You will have the, um, the excitement and the successes and all that happiness that goes with finally being able to fit into a certain size. You will have the 
downs of reflecting on how you used to eat and the guilt that you feel and the outrage of, uh, at least this is me, how much food you used to eat or how you used to make your choices or not make them and just allow yourself to plot through things. Um, and then you go through all of that and then all of a sudden you'll go back to, but I have done so well and, you know, like me this week, I've had a two kilo weight loss at this stage after all this time, you know, I'm, I'm on week 17 and two kilos weight loss in one week is amazing. So it, they do call it an emotional roller coaster for a reason. It is there and you don't know what's going to trigger it, whether it's people or reactions, whether it's you, a million things, just embrace it. Allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you're going through. Understand that it's a normal phase. Try to kind of rationalize why you're feeling that. Sometimes with, well, this might be me, but I often feel emotions and I need to really deconstruct what I'm feeling so that I can get to what's actually happening before I realize why, why I'm reacting in a certain way. So if you're the same, then just kind of work with that. If you're highly rational and you're not, then just you know, follow your your logic and it will, it will help you to get there. But that's the sort of thing that you need to take into account. Um, some people feel tired for 800 calories a day or 600 if you're on three products. Um, water, I've mentioned this, you make sure that, you, uh, that you drink a lot of water. Um, and let me see, let me see what other side effects. This is uh, a massive video, but I just wanted to go through things because there are a number of side effects that people don't tell you. And I think it's also important to know going with that. So increased energy, you know, we talk about side effects as bad things, but there are always a huge amount of good side effects too. So I'm going to go through a combination of both better sleep and better energy. So um, you'll be able to move better, you'll be able to um, do more things, be more active. You know, if you're used to walking a dog in a certain um, in a certain kind of circle or path, uh, you may find yourself that, that you go through that a lot quicker and now you want to go in a, a more extended walk. Or if you are used to uh, walking to uh, public transport, excuse me, public transport and you get there, um, it, it may be that it doesn't take you as long to get there or you find that you're moving around faster and with more agility than you used to do in the past. Those are things that you will notice in yourself. Um, but in exchange, because you're doing more and you're having less calories, you may feel more tired. So back to the water point. This all goes back to water. So, But please make sure that, that you keep in mind that you'll have high energy and you may feel a little bit more tired um, and the sleep and the energy and the movement and how much water will be big factors that work together. Um, if you do have a lot of weight to lose, you'll find that you breathe better because all of this has more space. You know, your neck will have more space. You may, when you lay down, you may not have as much weight crushing on your throat. Um, there are people that have sleep apnea from being overweight and uh, it may go away because all of a the sudden they don't have the weight of the fat on their neck crushing on the throats. Um, so, you know, you'll you'll sleep better. Um, the social life factor I've mentioned in the past, I mean, I have, uh, my current social life is probably that of a pensioner because my husband and I will go for dog walks and then we'll go and find somewhere to have a pot of tea at the weekend and we'll do that, we'll have a good chat, uh, uh, you know, and we may go walking and stuff, but we take a bar uh, of the products with us, we'll go, we'll have a pot of tea and that's what we're doing. As we start um, doing other things and as he, he's going to progress into step two and three quicker than me. So uh, I can imagine that we're going to continue to do the same. But as we change, then we'll probably do that. Um, I, I guess that's me. All I want to say is your social life might need to shift and change to help you fit your diet and your lifestyle into your everyday life. Um, and that might not be something you want to face or you're ready to face, but the reality is, for me, okay, I may be projecting here, but for me, I used to do so much around my social life that was food related. And it, it clearly wasn't habits that were supporting me achieve the weight that I wanted to achieve. So I've had to change that so that I can lose the weight that I want to lose. So that's involved a little bit of change. That's involved, um, you know, a fair amount of adjusting and I'm okay with it because I am so focused on prioritizing myself and that's the number one thing that I want to do. 
Um, you know, before I started in June, I spent the whole year going through uh, from Christmas to then there was somebody's birthday and then somebody else's birthday after that and then it was Valentine's and then it was my anniversary and then it was like well we're kind of at Easter and then I have a business trip and then I come back and then it's somebody else's birthday but then we have a barbecue so I couldn't possibly start then and then I'll do something else you know like excuses 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 so I was clearly looking for all of the reasons that I couldn't do the diet versus how am I going to fit the diet in so if you find yourself doing that then you may need to have just a little bit of a rethink of where you're at because that means you're not in the right headspace if you want to do the diet you'll think about what you want to do and that might mean that you have to change some life habits I leave that up to you to decide. It's not for me to tell you what to do. But for me, one of the things that's changed is my social life and how I interact with people. And I'm okay with that. Um, people's reactions. I did talk about this a little bit before, but I guess this is the... Um, it's not people's reactions. It's people's support. For me, I guess I've I have found through the support and the reactions to my weight loss, my, me doing the diet, etc. Through, you know, as I've said, the, the the flip side of the social life shifts and changes, and how you interact with the people in your life is that you're changing the script of how you're turning up into that conversation. So it will take a little bit of adjustment, and through that, people will react in different ways to it. Those who want to support you will be with you no matter what. Those who are frenemies might show their colours because of how they react to you. Those that don't care for you and then just are out for themselves, then they'll continue to do that. And you'll know it might be hurtful, but at least you know where you are. Um, and there are people who I don't think they consciously try to sabotage you, but is a way of they want to feel better because they feel guilty that you're doing something for yourself that they feel that they probably feel like they should be doing themselves and if they try to make you break it or give in then they might be subconsciously feeling better about themselves oh complex so um that might happen and i'm not sure that they necessarily mean bad to you but they also don't understand the impact of what they're projecting to you to make themselves feel better subconsciously I don't think anybody would consciously go out to fully sabotage you. Um, but if they're doing that, it's not helpful. So just have a think about how you want to deal with it. Uh, and if you want some ideas, let me know. Um, confidence. This is a tricky one because if, uh, I mean, being overweight will knock your confidence. I was going to say fact. I don't know if it's a fact or not because I'm not a psychologist, but in my life, fact um so because like i said what you do in private you show in public so you're kind of carrying around your nutritional mistakes wherever you go um so as you feel uh, better about yourself uh because you're losing the weight because you're getting into a better size your confidence is like is bound to to be boosted um I'm not saying the weight loss is the key to happiness and all of your life's problems will be sorted, but you'll have more confidence, you'll boost your self-esteem, you know, you'll like what you see in the mirror more, you'll enjoy that and you'll enjoy the changes and you'll have more pride in yourself and as a result of that, you're more likely to take better care of yourself and to put a bit more self-love into yourself, be it in how you dress yourself, taking a bit more attention, or how you look after yourself, or whatever it might be, however that turns out for you, but that's something that you'll go through. Um, the next one is that your body shape will change in unexpected ways. As I said, the body is a wonderful thing. It will do whatever it wants to do, and um, you just have to accept it. It changes as it wants. You know, my, my wardrobe has changed, but what I wasn't expecting is my feet to change. In the space of a month, a month ago, I bought a pair of slippers and right now they're a size too big for me. And that's not been just the one month, it's been all of the weight loss, but I just wasn't expecting that shift um, so quickly. Now, it's also because we've gone from summer to kind of more wintry type of weather, um, but that is something that I wasn't expecting. The other, the other thing that I've noticed is um, I used to wear fairly big earrings because I felt that 
smaller earrings will would drown in my face uh, and I think because my face was so wide that I needed something that was a bigger statement for them to be noticeable and now I'm finding that those earrings I almost feel like they're too big so the things that I'm choosing and the clothes that I'm selecting and everything are, ch are changing as my body shape is changing so what you wear the clothes that suit you um, you know your glasses your hair everything will and your clothes will shift and will change as you go down in weight and it might not be how you've gone down in weight in the past so don't expect to go back to a body shape that you've had previously just accept that your body is changing now and you may just need to work with whatever looks best at this point in time um you know historically i would never go anywhere near an um a type skirt um that was more triangular because i felt that my legs looked too far and it clung to my belly and it just did not look that good it made me look like a tent um, because it would stick out too much so I always would go for for straighter skirts but now I find that those straighter skirts are, are clinging to the part of my belly that I don't like and actually the a-line skirts look a lot better they make my waist look thinner um, and my legs have gone down more than ever so they actually look quite nice now versus what they were like before so I do like that. That's my representation of my legs. So um, so just adapt and accept and shift as you think that you need to. And don't, don't expect that you'll go back to where you were. Just enjoy discovering what your body does next. That's the best way that I can put it. Um, and then um, moving will be easier. Um, how you carry yourself will be easier. I've talked about the pride and everything, but... Um, you know, just the way you walk, you'll be able to walk faster. The way you sit, you'll find that you have more space in your seat. For me, I definitely find that at home. I find that at work. I find that when we lay down in bed, between the two of us, there's so much space. Before we were like fighting for duvet, now we can both cover ourselves in the duvet and be completely wrapped up nice and warm. And we're not bothering each other. And it feels like our bed, we just have so much more space to lose. Now we have both lots, respectively. 30 kilos so there is a massive you know there's 60 kilos less on the bed there's a whole person weight less on our bed now at night when we go to sleep um so that makes a massive difference and we feel that in the space we feel that in the space between us um you know in every way possible so you'll notice when you sit down when you're in public places if you go on a plane if you go on the bus if you're in the tube and um, you used to feel completely uh, completely stressed uh, or in a bus in public or um, you know with the people around you if you if you have somebody who's fully displaying man spread on public transport and you're like completely crushed now they may not crush you as much because you have that much more space so that's something that is uh, is really positive um, planning becomes more important I spoke about that in the past whether it's meals food what you're going to do uh, but also you'd be going to the toilet a lot because you're drinking all that water so make sure that you plan for having pit stops on the way for yourself I, still, I spoke about my driving you know it becomes an important thing I won't say anymore but just planning about everything food and all of your many different needs um your food changes crave and that's the next one uh look I have been doing this for a long time and I'm not going to say I've not had food cravings um, you still have to go through it and you have to kind of uh, get in the zone and say right I'll drink some more water this is how long I've got until my next product so I have to keep myself busy all of that kind of stuff but the type of foods that, that I think about when I think about food now are completely different I really just want a really nice chicken breast and some broccoli and some steamed broccoli at that, it doesn't have to be covered in butter or anything. That's all I want and that's kind of what I keep dreaming about that I'm going to eat when I go into step two next. And for me to say that is unreal. You don't know just how unreal that is, that that's what I'm looking forward to eat. Um, but that has shifted, you know, all the way from when I first started, it felt like my eyes were constantly important, spotting KFC ads everywhere in like, bus stops and everywhere or subway or you look at the tv and you see nothing but food ads everywhere and like your brain is going eat 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 and you have to kind of control yourself um all of that has quieted down it doesn't fully go away it comes back sometimes it creeps back and you have to just learn to manage it 
um, especially like this week I was in an office uh, uh, in a meeting room with a lot of people with like boxes of biscuits and chocolates and sweets and everything you know those points will get to anyone but I was there with my shake I stayed strong so um, I overcame that I thought about my chicken and broccoli it will come in uh, step two at the start of December so I managed myself but that's an interesting fact um, and then I spoke about the clothes and the look and everything now the one final thing that I will say is I don't know if this is just me it, it um, I think my husband's mentioned that he might have felt it as well but I have a thing that I call the pinch of weight loss and I don't know whether this is just me going crazy but um, I know that I'm losing weight, uh, when I get past a certain amount of weight, I feel almost like I'm being pinched occasionally from the inside and I take it to how the body's kind of picking out the fat and I'm like this because it's the pinch. It feels like you're being pinched from the inside and it's almost as if your body's taking the fat that is just kind of like the subcutaneal fat, the fat that is right underneath the skin and as if somebody was pinching you but from the from the inside. Um, and normally that means that I'm losing weight and actually it's not like it's a big pain it's like a little feeling like somebody just kind of pull your skin like this a little bit but from the inside um, and I actually it's almost like you're actually feeling where your body's taking the fat from and um, and I know that because then the following week after I feel if I feel one or two of those um, the following week I will feel like I have gone down in that area it could be completely psychological or not, but my husband's told me that he's felt it a couple of times as well. I feel it from time to time. I felt it in the past when I've lost a huge amount of weight and I'm feeling it again. So I haven't got a clue whether that's good or bad. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's your body processing the food and as it's getting to layers of fat that you may have carried for longer, it may just be harder for those to be pulled out. So I actually take that as a really good thing. But it is a side effect that I wanted to share. Uh, let me know if anybody else out there feels that. So um, I am. Uh, <laughs> I think I've gone through quite a thorough review of side effects. Uh, so I will leave it there. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, hope it's useful. If you have anything else, or if you have any questions about side effects or how to deal with them, um, or about the Cambridge diet or about weight loss in general, please let me know. Always more than happy to answer any questions, leave any comments, subscribe and uh, come back because I can't wait to continue to share uh, what I'm going through with you. All the best, have an amazing week and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye!